Scott Baldwin, Tom Haberfield, 300 appearances the Ospreys between you. It's the final day of training at Landas Academy. Last game for you tomorrow, Scott, against uh, Scarlet. So they said, yeah, it's the end of an era for you both. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good game to be going out on as well, like playing our local rivals and probably most fierce competition in what is ultimately a cup final, really, for qualification for next season. Uh, so, yeah, big game. And Tom just got too involved, but Tom, you, you haven't been involved the last few weeks, so it's probably a little bit tougher for you to keep on going. But again, you've been here today and bringing an end to your time as an Osprey as well. Yeah, I think um, you know, it has been a, a difficult few weeks and uh, I am going to miss the place. Um, but, you know, we have still got uh, one of the Bajan boys just finish, finishing off with a, with a win, hopefully. And, um, you know, I, I'd love my time here and I, I hope the boys uh, go well tomorrow. There's been a lot said about the Bridgend Massive at uh, Landarcy Academy of Sport and I'm looking and talking to two of the founder members. You know, some characters have come and gone over the years amongst that. Do you want to perhaps tell the audience a bit more about them? Yeah, the original crew was myself, Havers, Nippers, Nipper and Webby. Um, two of us, it's a farewell today. It's the last, uh, last, last day driving down to Landarcy. Both been here for 10 years. Um, for some good memories, I remember we picked, picked the hitchhiker up, remember that? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> dropped him off at the roundabout. Um, <laughs> and some, some, just some good times. We've travelled down to Cornwall together and Webby got a car for us. Uh, and just, yeah, just loads of great memories and uh, things we look back on in years to come, I'm sure. I think passing the torch on now to Luke Morgan, Owen Watkin and Garth Thomas, who's adopted Bajen. So uh, you know, hopefully they do lift the club proud and uh, keep the Bajen going. That's the question, Gat Tom. You know, he adopted Bridgen and he's wearing the Raven shirt with pride and celebrating survival. But is he really part of Bridgen? He's doing all right to be. He's trying hard to be fair to him. So, uh, you know, I think you've got to be special to fit in in Bridgen, and he's uh, he's doing all right. Yeah, in other words, Crossy's coming to his own. Oh, Young yeah. Sam Crossy's coming. He's a uh, proper Bridgen boy, trying to get deals here, there, and everywhere, bringing stuff in the back of his car for the boys. So he's, he's fitted right in as well. <laughs> Taking over Hibbard's mantle as the real dealer, then, is he? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Yeah, looking on the field, so many memories over the years, you say, he's got 165 appearances, nine tries. Tom, 135 appearances, also nine tries. You know, there's so many things to pack in over the years. He's got winning the Pro, the Pro 12 title as it was in Dublin. Tom, stand-up moment for everyone when you're winning the try of the season, 2015-16 yeah. in Clement Avern. Any other memories or anything, what, what stands out for you both? Um, I think it was the season we got to the semi-final in Munster and we scored a try to win it and I think Nigel pulled it back for knock yeah. on the ruck. That was probably my most enjoyable season as an Osprey for the whole season um, and I think a few boys have mentioned that it was it was a really great year and team um, spirit. Yeah, yeah, it was really good on and off the field. Um, so that's probably that's probably my most fond memory as a season. Um, but look, winning. Winning silverware was obviously a huge, huge occasion. The first year Steve took over, um, he probably give give a lot of onus to us as players and put it into us that we're going to be playing with the future. Um, so yeah, that was a huge season for myself, um, and yeah, it's been a great ten years. Really. I, I was lucky enough. Uh, Steve actually took me as travelling reserve for that game. Um, I don't know what I would have done if I actually was picked mine, but uh, you know, I, I was there and. Um, I was really grateful to be part of that, that winning squad, so that was really, really uh, a big moment for me. And I think um, the other one that stands out is, is getting my 100th cap with Sam Davis. So, um, you know, I've, I've played with him all the way through, and, and lucky enough we had the 100th cap on the same day, and I think that's something that I'll never forget as well. And there are other stories in Scott in particular, some things come up that we have to bring up with you on a farewell interview. <laughs> First one, can you set the record straight on? One, two muggins in Italy when you're out in Lone in Milan. What what was the story? It was a muggins. It was well. It started with Andrew Hall. We were, initially, when we were going up, when I was being sent over to Italy, it was you'll have a car when you get to Milan. To the flight over, it'd be a scooter. To when I finally arrived there, it was a push bike. Hmm. Um, so I was driving on the streets of Milan on my push bike. Um, I parked it up to train, come out. That's been nicked. Um, and then after a game on a Sunday, uh, we went out for a night out. One of the boys was designated drivers. Had my boots, my kit, my money in there, and come back. The boot of the car had been broken into, and the bag had been nicked. But look, the club I was at was brilliant. They turned up the next morning um, with a lot of cash, 
um, to ease the pain. Um, but yeah, there was, there was, I didn't actually get mugged, I got robbed <laughs> twice. Um, so we'll clear that up. But as a young man, though, pretty character building. Yeah, it was great. It was at the time, it wasn't where I wanted to be. Obviously, I wanted to be playing for the Ospreys. Um, and I seen it as at the time, you were one of those, if you got sent away to play, it was probably the beginning of the end. But like I say, come back, uh, played a couple of LV games, and Steve Steve took the reins and put a lot of confidence and faith in me. Um, and I've had great mentors over the year, Mervyn, Davis, Richard Hibbard, and Hugh Bennett, who have been fantastic to me throughout my career, and I still have, uh, have conversations with now. And you have to, you probably roll your eyes now when I say Plumfontaine, September 2017. What happened, David? Well, you tell me, you tell me. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I just went to stroke the cat and he bit me. <laughs> uh, no, obviously we went to Safari and what happened happened, but look, there was no lasting damage and I think it's something now which... Lived to tell the tale, didn't it? Yeah, and I get three doubts for free quite a bit in terms of going out and doing a couple of dinners here and there. <laughs> um, so yeah, it hasn't all been bad and look, it's something to... Tell Sonny when I'm older now is don't put you around the lion cage and you say you done it so <laughs> it's always going to be that uh, that debate going on but no look it's it's one of those things it was it happened and moved on from it I'm back playing now and uh, back enjoying my rugby. Well, it's fair to say there's nobody else to pretend will ever be able to dine up with the story that I've been bitten by a lion and survived. No well it's, for me it's just it was lucky it was a cage otherwise the lion would have had a bat drain so yeah. <laughs> Tom so, um, no plans on putting your hand in a lion's cage and. Uh, put your hand in a lion's mouth and then living off that story for the rest of your life? God, no, not, not one I'd want to do, I don't think. But, um, you know, it's brought the uh, limelight to Bridgend, I think, isn't yeah. it? And, uh, and to us all, and something I think people will be talking about for ages, won't they? So, uh, you know, those, it, was a, it was a great trip other than that, wasn't it? Yeah, so, it was good, yeah, it was good yeah. other than that. It was great this year as well. We had a lot of uh, team building and stuff mm -hmm. out there, a few socials, a bit of an old school tour, which was good, and I think that helped bring us together as a squad after all the controversy that's gone over over the last couple of months. And I suppose the question then, as, as two young men start with you, Tom, when you pick up a rugby ball as a kid and play in your local club, I don't think you can ever imagine that you're going to go professional rugby, you know, over 100 games for your home region and achieve and do all you've done. It's the stuff that dreams are made of, isn't it, for your home region? I, I think it's made me think about it more now, looking back and, you know, how proud I am of uh, the career I've achieved. Um, you know, having captained the Ospreys as well, it was, it was, um, it was such a privilege for me. And um, yeah, 135 games, I, n I never even thought about it, to be honest with you, especially with the scrum halves that have been here, I've learned from. Um, you know, I'm massively grateful to everyone who's helped me o over my time here. And um, it's the, the boys I'll miss the most, I think. It's, um, you know, they've been great, whether they've, they've come and gone or they're still here. Um, that's how I think I'll miss the most. I think it's great to just mention on Habers there as well. Habers is 26 years old and played 135 games, that's, that's some achievement. Um, and I've fortunately been around for pretty much all of the games, well all of them, but unless I've been away. Um, I think it's testament to him as a player, um, what he does on and off the field. It's not just on the field, there's a lot of off the field as a professional rugby player, which you probably don't realise when you come into it. I remember when I first signed, I thought, great, just train a bit now, play, enjoy it. But you find the hardest part of the week isn't the game, it's probably the easiest part of the week. It's the whole process which gets you to the game and the stuff off the field, your nutrition, your recovery as you get older, as I'm starting to find out. Um, but yeah, same as Habers, I, I never would have dreamt of playing the amount of games I played for the Ospreys and played for my country. I remember when I signed for the Ospreys, I was driving home my sack, so whooping and thinking I had made it. but. Once you get into the nux of it and you start playing, you realise how hard it is um, and how fortunate we are to be where we are. Um, and I think, again, the older you get and as you start to realise you're moving on to new new clubs, new ventures, whatever it is, um, how fortunate you've been to be in the situation we've been in, the club we've been in over the last 10 years. And it's an opportunity for us to farewell video, it's an opportunity to say thanks to whoever you want to say thanks to for over the years, players you've learned from, coaches you work with, whatever. But also perhaps one last chance to dig out anybody who needs to have a crack at. Um, I think people need to keep hammering Sam Cross because he's a little bit above his station here so <laughs> at the moment. Um, Olympic silver medalist. Uh, so he, he keeps saying, he saying yeah. that every single day yeah. and he shows you with his tattoo on his arm every single day. Um, <laughs> 
But yeah, I remember we put, uh, I think it was Glasgow where he went out on a night out um, and he was cute to get everywhere and he walked up to the front and I was like, oh, all right, mate, um, any, any chance of the boys getting in, showing his Olympic thing and the guy was like, mate, get to the back of the queue. <laughs> As if um, he thinks it gets him places where it clearly doesn't. Um, but no, nah, there's, there's not really anyone. There's, it's a great bunch of boys here, um, and I'm sure there's, uh, there's going to be more to come in the coming years. And then you added that, Tom? Um, I just kind of give a quick shout out to my gran, who's uh, she's been with me since day one, and I just want to thank you very much for everything you've done for me, bringing me to academy training. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for you, so thank you very much. Can I give a shout out to Tom's nan as well? I always see her in the same reason she always uh, has a chat with me about rugby. <laughs> um, and she, again, she's I've seen her in the stands for the last 10 years, which is brilliant. Um, so I have his nan. <laughs> Thank Scott Baldwin, and Tom Aberfield, thanks to everybody else, please, and good luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you all the fans. Thank you.